Hello there, my fellow mech warriors and fans of overwhelming firepower, and welcome to your regular dose of the Battletech Battlemax lore. Today's topic is not the heaviest, nor the fastest, nor the best armored model in the universe, but it is still a very reliable, resilient workhorse of a battle mech regardless. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Stalker Assault Battle Mech. Now, if you've been good and patient boys and girls, you will also get to hear about the Stalker 2 in this same episode. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Some basic stats for this guy include It is an assault weighing 85 tons, its top speed is 54 km an hour, and its rounded price is 7,464,000 Seabells. The Stalker was first produced in 2594 as a heavy assault battle mech for the Reunification War. The engineers and designers of Triad Technologies created the Stalker to be a heavily armored weapons platform, capable of handling combat at any range and absorbing a tremendous amount of punishment. Although among the slowest mechs ever built, the Stalker is still fast enough to keep up with the other assault mechs and lead major advances, using its firepower to blast holes in the enemy lines. Its heavy armor and armament also makes it well suited for urban combat. Indeed, a favorite tactic developed by Stalker pilots was to lie in wait inside a building until an enemy mech passed by then crash through the wall and emerge onto the street behind them. For almost 200 years, the Stalker remained in service in the Star League Defense Force as a workhorse assault mech, until the fall of the Star League. But even then, it continued in the same capacity for another two centuries, in service to the successor states. It also remained in continuous production during all this time, for when Triad technologies were destroyed in the Succession Wars, both Iran Battlemax Unlimited and the Trellshire Heavy Industries began producing their own stalkers on Shiro 3 and Twycross. Thus, the Three Worlds League and the Lyran Commonwealth were able to maintain the largest number of the stalkers in their arsenals. Still, the mech was so common throughout the inner sphere and the periphery that some pilots lost their fear of it entirely, or at least until they had to face one in battle. Starting in the late 3040s, Iran began utilizing newly recovered lost technology to update the original design, improving upon its weaponry and armor, and increasing its heat management capabilities. The new STK-5M models were fielded just in time to take part in the clan invasion, although even with their upgrades, they were sorely tested against the clan's Omnimax. New variants would be continue to be produced in the wake of the Fedcom Civil War and by Iran in an effort to further keep the design alive. The Stalker's weapons array is geared to increase damage as it closes with the enemy. Its long-range weapons are two Jackson B5C LRM-10 launchers, one of each mounted in either arm with an accompanying one ton of reloads. These provide the Stalker with its longest range punch and allow it to give indirect fire support when required. At the medium ranges, the Stalker next brings to bear its two Magna Mark III large lasers, split between the left and right torso. For even closer ranges, the Stalker carries four Magna Mark II medium lasers, split between the two arms, and the two Thunderstroke SRM-6 launchers, each fed by two tons of reloads. The number of weapons carried by the Stalker is so powerful that should a pilot attempt to fire all of them at once, they would easily overwhelm the 20 heatsinks carried by the mech. Originally, the Stalker used a special fire control computer, which determined the range to the enemy and suggested the optimal mix of weapons to avoid such a problem. Although with the ravages of time, many older mechs lack this vital piece of equipment. The pilots must therefore be very careful when in combat. Thirteen and a half tons of armor may defend against many enemy blows, but they will do nothing to prevent an ammunition explosion caused by overheating. Some variants of this big guy include 
Please take in consideration that not all the pictures used are fully accurate representations of the actual variants, though. The SDK 3FB This royal variant of the Stalker was introduced in 2705 and carries a Guardian ECM suite in the center torso, upgrades the large lasers to extended range versions, and adds Artemis IV fire control systems to the LRM-15s, which in turn replace the Jackson LRM-10s. The SRM-6 racks are all gone, and the standard heatsinks were replaced with 17 double heatsinks. Surviving examples of these variants left with Alexander Kerensky during Operation Exodus. The SDK-3H This one was introduced by Triad Technologies in 2638 to take part in sieges. This mech removes both large lasers and the LRM-10s and replaces them with LRM-20 launchers and 2 tons of ammo. This turned the 3H into a very powerful long-range support mech. The SDK-4N a modification of the Stalker introduced in 2876, which sought to increase its heat efficiency, the 4N removes one of the LRM-10 launchers and adds six heatsinks to the design. These made the Stalker more heat efficient, but it also made the mech weaker when engaging at long range. The SDK-5M an upgrade originating from the Free Worlds League, the 5M variant of the Stalker was introduced in 3050, using moderate amounts of Starlink technology. Most of the weaponry was retained, but both large lasers were removed, for a single ER large laser placed in the mech's centerline, and a NARC missile beacon in the left torso, accompanied by two tons of reloads. The 17 double heatsinks of the 5M afforded far greater heat efficiency than the single 20 heatsinks of the previous models, although it still couldn't handle firing all the weapons at once. Other changes included the use of proprietary technologies such as Iran Ear Communication System, the Rees 456 armor, and an Iran Chassis Class 30. Unfortunately, the designers of the 5M dismissed the inclusion of Case, a factor which led directly to the death of several stalkers during the clan invasion due to ammunition cook-offs caused by overheating and weapon penetration. The SDK-5S Outfitted with the relatively recently discovered Starlink technology of circa 3050, the FEDCOM 5S can be characterized primarily by its tendency to overheat. The designers behind the variant took the simple expedient of upgrading the engine and firepower without taking heat buildup into consideration. The mech has had its engine replaced by an XL engine, and the large lasers were removed and replaced by two large pulse lasers. For protection against ammunition explosion, case was finally added to both side torsos and an anti-missile system was also added for extra protection. The SDK-6M This is Iran's attempt to make up for the shortcomings of the 5M. The 6M, introduced in 3062, drops the SRMs entirely, upgrades the LRMs to 15 tube racks with integrated Artemis IV FCS, and upgrades the lasers to ER versions, mounting also a fifth medium one. Most importantly, the LRM magazines are protected by case. The SDK-7D The 7D Stalker introduced by the Federated Suns in 3062 is built on a standard chassis and engine for rugged durability, and carries a primarily energy arsenal. The two main weapons are two ERPPCs, giving the 7D a striking distance of almost 700 meters. The mech is also armed with four medium pulse lasers for close combat, which are backed up by two Streak SRM-4 launchers to take advantage of any weak points in the enemy armor. The SDK-8S Introduced by the Lyran Alliance in 3064, this one is built around a new light fusion engine, which finally frees up some tonnage for heavier weaponry. The 8S is armed with two ERPPCs for long-range combat, 
When it closes with the enemy, it can bring its new heavy Gauss rifle to bear at intermediate to short ranges. Finally, for short range combat, it carries two medium pulse lasers and two ER medium lasers. A famous custom variant of the Stalker is the so-called Stalker Jameson. This one is the personal mech of J. Elliot Jameson, commander of Wolf's Dragoons Zeta Battalion, and was built in 3054 as a clan tech version of the venerable STK-3F. The large lasers were replaced with large pulse lasers, the medium lasers upgraded to ER medium lasers, and a pair of LRM-20s are used instead of the original 10-tube launchers. Rounding out this fearsome weapon array, two ammo-efficient streak SRM-6s are used. 18 clan double heatsinks are used to help control the heat load. Finally, ferrofibrous armor is used to protect this powerful battle mech. The Stalker 2 Based on the original Starly Gira battle mech, the Stalker 2 is a complete top-to-bottom redesign. Its conception was propelled by the events of Grey Monday in 3132. Iran engineers on Shiro 3 reviewed records of the classic Stalker over its entire service life, and focused their efforts on taking the best of these qualities in a new design. The efforts resulted in the Stalker 2, giving troops an incredibly durable assault mech that is able to withstand horrific amounts of damage. First deployed by the armed forces of the Duchy of Andurian in 3137, the Stalker II was deployed in all the major commands. This mech saw first action during the Duchy of Oriente's invasion of Andurian. Shortly after the conflict, Iran began selling the Stalker II to Andurian allies as a means of drumming up cash for the Duchy. Sales of the design would see the mech deployed with various combat units within the Capellan Confederation and the now defunct Merrick Stewart Commonwealth. Designed to take a huge amount of punishment, the Stalker II's armor protection consists of 27 tons of Rees 675 hardened armor with Case 2. The Stalker II is powered by a strand rated 255 fusion engine the very same model used to power its ancient brothers over the centuries. The old power plant proved unable to overcome the weight of the new heavy armor and causes the mech maximum speed to be slowed down to only 43 kph. Adding to these protected aspects of the design, the cockpit has been moved to the torso, while a compact gyro is installed to make room for it. One of the aspects that contributed to the original Stalker's success was variants that used Starlink era fire control systems. In order to recapture this particular aspect of the older design, the Stalker 2 was fitted with a modern targeting computer, which ties into its eight Magna Mark II medium lasers. For long-range firepower, the mech relies on two Iran Weapon Works LRM-10 launchers with four tons of ammo between them. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Stalker Assault Battle Mech for today. In my opinion, it is a very solid mech, which provides a good blend between survivability, thanks to its loads of armor, and its fire support role thanks to its heavy weapons payload for multiple ranges. Is the Stalker among your favorite battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? As always, do feel free to share any opinions or thoughts or experiences regarding it in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. This is GDN signing out.